AI has been a driving force behind most of the ad platform changes that we're getting recently, and this change from Google Ads is no different. In late February of 2025, they announced a new way that your assets can show in your responsive search ads. So in this video, we wanna talk through that change and maybe a couple of the other changes that you might not have heard about in the recent past. We're gonna start with the most recent update as of February of 2025, and then we'll talk a little bit about some of the previous updates here in just a minute. But we're gonna start in the Google announcement about this change. And rather than talk about the text on the page, I'm just gonna scroll down to the image that we can see here. And this is the gist of the update that we're getting now, is that headlines that you've provided for your responsive search ads can now show up as site links rather than actual headlines. In the image here, you can see that laptops on sale now and shop farewell for the best deals are the two headlines that are showing up in this responsive search ad. There's then a couple of different descriptions and then there's four site links, but two of them say that they are headlines that the advertiser provided, but were not used as headlines. Now in the typically vague way that Google usually approaches this type of change, it says that this will happen when it believes that the headline text is predicted to have better performance than what the site links would have been in their place. Depending on how much you trust Google's AI or don't trust it, this could be a great change or something that you're a little bit salty about. But the reason Google says they're making this change is because they've heard from advertisers that you spend a lot of time putting together your 15 different headlines only to find that a lot of them simply don't get shown. Additionally, my guess is that because people put in a lot of time in their headlines and in my experience, less thought and effort into their site links, they're probably writing more compelling headlines than they are the text that they're using for site links. So in many instances, just from an anecdotal point of view, I would think that these probably might perform better than some of the site link text that people use. But let's talk about some of the mechanics of how this change is gonna work, because depending on how you approach your responsive search ads and your site links, this might be a little bit scary. First, just as you can see in the image, these site links will show only when there's not the expanded version of the site links, meaning that the descriptions that you can apply to site links will not be shown in your ad copy. So the headlines will fit in just fine with the way that the shortened site links would show up because it's only one line of text. There's no additional piece there. Second, when a headline is used as a site link, it will retain the same final URL as you were going to use in your base responsive search ad. Now, while we advertisers don't get to control it, this is a little bit of a workaround for the rule where each site link has to have its own URL and you can't have multiple site links sending people to the same URL. Lastly, all of these changes will still respect your pinned assets. If we scroll down a little bit, we can find the text that supports this. It's gonna be in this paragraph. If you have assets that are pinned to headline position one, headline position two, or description position one, they'll continue to show in those designated positions when your ads serve. Now, the inclusion of description position one is a little interesting there, but effectively this means that if you have a headline that is pinned in position one or position two, it will continue to show only in those positions and will not show elsewhere. So if you have three different headlines pinned in position one, one of those three variants will show there, but even though the other two are not used, they will not fall into the unused headline category that would then be eligible to show as site links. That's how I understand it, that's how I read it, should mean that you're able to keep all of those separate. Now, if you'll remember, there were some updates made to responsive search ads headline strategies last year. Google did mention it at the beginning of this article, but here's a look at what that announcement was. In some instances, responsive search ads can now show only one headline rather than two or potentially three when it's predicted to perform better than it would if you had the expanded version of your ad. So the image here on the left shows shop all natural moisturizers as headline one, freshen up with our skincare as headline two, and the version of your ad that they're saying is possible with this update that was in 2024 is to only have shop all natural moisturizers as headline one, no headline two added into the ad. So that in combination with this change where your headlines can show as site links means that you still might have just one headline showing up and all of the other variants 
if you don't have them pinned into certain locations, can show as site links. But if you do have assets pinned in position two, with these two updates from Google, it means that you might not even show your headline position two. That real estate is now up in the air, depending on the real time assessments that Google's AI makes about how effective your ad would be with a headline two included. Unfortunately, neither of these changes are things that we can opt into. We simply need to adjust our strategy for them. Overall, site links are usually leveraged as additional actions or information that you want the user to have when they're reading your ad. They're meant to supplement the ad variant rather than be a continuation of the exact same message. So when we start trying to create our responsive search ads and pin assets into certain locations, we can keep that in mind. Anything that is meant to be the core message and is valuable for the user to know and understand about your product or service is probably a good fit to be pinned into some position within your responsive search ad but other assets that are simply additional information or might not be core to the understanding of your business might make sense to leave them unpinned so they could potentially show up as site links still driving to the same URL that ideally might outperform what your existing site links are. No matter what strategy you end up taking, you do still have the option to see how all of these pieces are performing together and understand how Google is showing your ad to your potential audience. I apologize, we're gonna have to have pretty much all of this blurred, but to actually show you anything, we need to go into a live client account. I'm in the campaigns main management section and I'm down in the ads portion. So I'm looking at just the two ads that are in this specific ad group. And to see how these ads are being shown, you need to go to view asset details for the individual ad. On this page, you'll be able to see what assets have been shown, some performance indicators, but what we really wanna understand is the combinations report. That's gonna be right up here under responsive search ad. Click on combinations. And as I mentioned, I'm sorry all these are gonna be blurred out, but we can then see the different combinations that our ads have had. In this first row of ad variants, the ones that have the most impressions, each one of them only has one headline shown. Big takeaway there, Google is serving only one headline quite a bit, at least for this ad, in this ad group, in this account, in this industry. Yours may vary, but for this one, showing one headline quite a bit. If we then scroll down, this first ad variant over here will show that it is only showing one headline, showing a couple descriptions, the business name, the logo, but then we have the site links down below. Now, unfortunately, there's no great indicator as to whether this asset was originally a headline or a site link, but it will show you what messaging has been added into the site link space so you can understand how everything is working together. If you need to, you might need to cross check between what your site links are, what your headlines are, if you have so many and you can't remember which ones went where, but overall you will be able to see what combination Google is serving your ads and which assets are showing up in which fields. Overall, I'm a little mixed on this update. Personally, I pay quite a bit of attention to what strategies we use with site links, We've even put together a video that you can check out at the top of the screen right now talking about how to leverage site links to get the most out of your accounts. But I also understand that not as many people do that. And unfortunately, sometimes Google is smarter than I am. Although there are some scenarios where I will pin every one of my headlines, which I talked about in the video around responsive search ads that you can check out at the top of the screen right now, it might start to make sense for me to adjust my strategy a bit and messaging that I think could be used as a site link, maybe I'll leave that unpinned. Maybe I don't pin assets into every single place. Maybe I only choose one. Maybe I only choose headline one or only headlines one and two. But again, that might mean that that headline two might not show up. And in the example account I just showed means that most of them won't show up. Most of those ads are only showing one headline. So with that said, there's still a lot up in the air as to how this will perform, but it might make sense for you to take a step back Think about how you're pinning your assets in your responsive search ads and what type of messaging you're using in those headlines, as well as what you're providing to your site links to make sure that no matter which combination Google serves your ads, everything makes sense to the user and ideally they're able to engage with your business in the ways that you want them to. If you have any additional questions about this update or any of the other updates to Google ads, leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.